This is your sim racing track guide to the Red Bull Ring. The Red Bull Ring is one of the most technical circuits in the world. It's one of the most difficult circuits in the world. It's an actual masterpiece, I think. you got the straights, but then you've also got these insanely difficult corners with sausage curves on the inside. You've got the very tricky technical sector two in the middle of the circuit. And then the pressure you feel in sector three, especially when it comes to time trialing, is insane. So whatever sim you're on, this track guide is going to be super helpful for you. If you happen to be on Gran Turismo 7, it's going to be even more helpful because I've recorded this in Gran Turismo 7 because I'm about the fast in the top 100 or so fastest drivers globally at this track at the moment. So I thought I'd record the track guide here. But by the end of this video, I'm going to sh have shown you every single corner, all the secret sort of tips, the lines, the references, when to get on the brake, when to release the brake, when to get on the power, which is weird at this circuit. You get on power at different times than you might think. The sort of um, hidden turning references um, to turn in in the midfield part and basically unlock all of these things so I'm sure by the end of this video you are going to be faster at the Red Bull Ring. So if you want to be faster at Red Bull Ring, you come to the right place. We're going to start the lap here. And by the way, I do do sim racing coaching as well, so this video does help you out. Uh, but you want to go even faster, feel free to contact me, business at kirithk.com. It's in the description where we could do some bespoke coaching for you. But we're going to come into turn one. Turn one and turn three, similar corners. Turn one, I want to pause it here so you can see that we're braking just before the 100 meter board now. We're in a GT3 car here in Gran Turismo 7, but normally the faster car you're in, the better brakes you have. So it turns to equalize out. I'm going to play it forward a little bit because we're basically going to use the first 50 meters here to brake in a straight line. So maximum braking in a straight line. Then we get to the 50 meter board. Now there's going to be some deceptive stuff in the telemetry here because you're going to see, I think, a bit of engine, a bit of throttle blipping. That's done automatically in GT7. I racing can do that automatically as well, for example. But basically, we're going to bleed off the brake and get on the throttle sooner than you might think. So you're going to see a, a throttle spike soon, but I believe this is this is a blip, or this isn't me fully getting on the throttle. In, in, in a turbo car like this, you do want to spool up the turbo earlier than you think. And everything we're going to do here at turn one, we're going to exaggerate at turn three, because turn one is actually uphill. So you do want to get on the power sooner or later. You see here on the power right now building it over the sausage curb and running wide on the exit so we braked 100 to the 50 eased off of the 50 got on the power and as we're going over the sausage curb on the inside we're getting on the power to 100 percent we're going to do the same thing here we're going to break actually a similar pace around the 100 board here i'm slowing it down here we're going to get on the brake we're going to go down into second gear in this car we're going to get on the power way sooner than you might think it's a bit of uh, engine uh, throttle blipping there but look at me now in in uh, in gear two, getting on the power again as we're going over the sausage curb, and look how quickly I'm feeding in that power. And you saw my right arm there just to straighten up. If you apply that amount of power when you have too much lock, you will cause a lot of cars, especially rear wheel drive cars, to spin. You lose that back end. So important there to kind of stabilise it and basically go up the hill. Coming in here to turn four where you actually break a little bit earlier than you might expect. Now, it's all about the line here. So the ghost ahead, I think, might be the quickest car in the world, or one of the quickest cars in the world. So that's what we're trying to chase down. And you can see here, we're going to be... You really appreciate it at this speed, by the way, because you're going to see it's all about weight transfer. We're trying to get all the weight in the car over to the right-hand side. So you can see here, we desperately... You can really appreciate this at this uh, speed desperately trying to get the car over to the right side. See, I've still got a little bit of brake on because I don't want to run wide on the exit here. That's the disaster. I don't want to get Alex Albon. But now we're on the power. Real-wheel drive car. Getting on the power here can really, really help to rotate uh, rotate the car. If you're in a front-wheel drive car, that's not going to work. I wouldn't recommend that technique. Most racing cars are, are wheel-wheel drive. And now fully on the power there. So all about trying to turn the car in there and get the rotation here. Here's some little secrets to you. There is a little reference here. See that white line that's our line to turn in very very important and you can see also often in games and sims you'll have the rubbered line so we've got a rubbered line here and where it meets the curb that's going to be our apex point you can see that that car's apex a little bit earlier than me so i'm having to sacrifice a bit more speed in order to be able to make the corner but we're full throttle now i'm going to keep playing this at i think 25 percent for this part because i want to show you how wide you run on the exit here by the way we're going to do a full speed lap after this um, so you'll see it all full speed. And again here, follow the rubbered lines. Super, super helpful. If you ignore the rubbered lines here, it's almost impossible to pick out a reference, right? 
Now, I always think it's important to touch that curb, graze that curb. Imagine if you were just out of the window, you could sort of touch the curb with your with your um, hand there. That shows that you're getting the right line. Got to be careful running over these sort of sawtooth edge curves because you can really unsettle the car, but then we power all the way through. So that's how to navigate those, two, those three corners. Coming into the last two corners, lap double right handers, pressure can retail with 50 board. That's where we're starting to turn in and we're going to sort of bleed off the brake. And again, we're going to try and get on the power early here because there is an opportunity to squirt the throttle some more. So you can see I'm on the power, on the power, on the power, obviously balancing it. Track limits different in different sims here. We don't want to go all the way over the curb. So we're following the same line as the ghost. And then we're going to come here really important here. You break early than you think and you get all the way in this dip. The camber helps you out. It's the shortest route past the corner. Not a disaster if you hit that sausage curb often, but it is a disaster if you run too wide. We're going to again unwind the steering to maximize the speed that we're getting. The more lock you apply on the steering, the slower you're going to accelerate. And now I'm going to show you the lap in full speed. So this is going to be super helpful. That was a 27.5, which I think was in top 100 or so globally. So we're going to come over here uh, to start the lap. Uh, you can see here, here I happen to be in third gear, up to fourth down to third gear, getting in that dip on the power immediately. Now, when we play the full speed, you're going to see just how quickly you need to think to do all this stuff. By the way, if this video helps you, please, please, please hit that like button. Take the opportunity right now, hit the like button, hit the subscribe. I massively appreciate it. Breaking at 100, turning in at the 50, getting on that curb, on the power nice and early. It's uphill, so you don't want to spend any time off the throttle, really, if you can't afford it, because you're going to lose so much momentum going up the hill. Don't really want to drag a wheel on the inside here on the grass um, in most sims. It will just take you out, breaking at the 100, turning in again a little bit after the 50, up to second gear, on the power, super, super, super early, trying to counter steer it. You see the back end there, even there wanted to come around, but we were like, no, not going to let you. Then coming in here to turn four, breaking earlier than we expect. This is a downhill corner. Last few has been uphill. This is a downhill corner. So earlier than you expect, trying to open up the corner and just wrestle the car in to get the rotation. All about rotation there. Do not get on the power too early. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Now these are a mixture. You do want to get on the power relatively early because they're not quite as tight. So rotate, rotate, get on the power. Get on the power now. Use the grip and the tires to pull you around. Same thing here, even more um, abbreviated, shorter break, get on the power earlier, feed it in, max throttle. Now for the next two right-handers, if you're on a good lap here, you'll know that the pressure will be building and you'll want to do a good lap. So we're going to see here all the way over to the left, try and get on the curb there, opportunity for max throttle again, break early than you think downhill, get in that, in that camber and across the line. Let me know in the comments if this track guide has helped you, let me know what you want to see in future videos. If you want more bespoke coaching, get in touch with me, business at kirithk.com for some bespoke coaching. It would be amazing to help you get even faster. But that is your sim racing track guide for the Red Bull Ring. Super excited to be able to make this and I'll see you. See you next time.